Journalist Maria Ressa, whose work has angered authorities in the Philippines, has been named joint winner of this year's Nobel Peace Prize. Ms. Ressa and Russia's Dmitry Muratov have been honored for their efforts to safeguard freedom of expression. This year's Nobel Peace Prize honors the right to free speech and pays tribute to journalism, as it lauds to journalists. They are representatives of all journalists who stand up for this ideal in a world in which democracy and freedom of the press face increasingly adverse conditions. The work of Maria Ressa and Dmitry Muratov has been under persistent attack. Ms. Ressa's reporting on Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte's war on drugs unleashed a grinding series of criminal charges, two arrests and a deluge of online threats. Rappler, the media company she co-founded in Helms, has also faced multiple criminal charges and investigations. Journalism has never been as important as it is today, and yet it is so difficult to do the job that we had set out. Um, in order to keep doing what we're doing, Rappler lives with the possibility of a shutdown on a daily basis. You know, we, we're on quicksand, and yet at the same time, if you keep the North Star ahead of you, you know, you protect the facts, you hold power to account, you exercise the rights that is in the Philippine Constitution. That's what we did, and that's what we'll keep doing. It's a similar story for Dmitry Muratov, the editor-in-chief of Russian investigative newspaper Novaya Gazeta. It's one of the few media outlets left, voicing criticism of President Vladimir Putin. Mr. Muratov has dedicated his win to the independent paper and six reporters that he says have been killed defending freedom of speech. Some observers see the win as highlighting the dangers journalists face. It will be a decisive decade for journalism. Journalism is in danger. Democracies are weakened by disinformation, by rumours, by hate speech. This is a time for mobilization, for journalism, for democracy. And this award will be very useful to call on everybody to mobilize for this important and key social function, which is journalism. I was uh, was very uh, happy and, and not at all surprised to see that uh, the committee is awarding uh, journalists for uh, with a Peace Prize this year. We've had media uh, on our list consecutively for five years, and I think it's uh, it's high time and, and a bit overdue. The prize is the first for journalists since 1935. Both winners will share a 1.14 million cash prize. You know, you know. For reaction from Manila, Buena Bernal joins us. Uh, Buena, was Maria Ressa's win expected? Astounded was the word that Rappler, the company that veteran journalist Maria Ressa co-founded, used in its statement in reaction to the Nobel Peace Prize uh, when she is the first Filipino to win this award. And um, if you look at the things that its critics have pointed out, it's actually the question of how did Rappler learn of Ms. Ressa's nomination uh, that it also reported on last February. So uh, there's been questions on that. So, the, so, so on the discussion of the, is, did this come as a surprise? Well, um, because there is a secrecy and confidentiality to the shortlist, uh, to the award, um, typically, uh, this is a guesswork, pure guesswork before the announcement. But because her nomination was leaked in February, there have been some expectations um, before this uh, announcement. And also, even the nomination itself, when it was leaked, already drew uh, congratulatory remarks. Um, Ms. Ressa has been seen as a press freedom icon. Uh, her works, uh, she's written extensively on disinformation, a rappler. Uh, her company has written extensively on uh, corruption and rights issues under Philippines President Rodrigo Duterte. And Rattler's presidential beat reporter, Pia Renada, has actually been banned from the presidential palace. Um, she also faces a slew of charges. Uh, warrant arre uh, arrest warrants have been released for her. She is on bail on some of these cases. And um, these cases involve cyber libel, 
tax uh, related charges. And while the cyber libel charges were lodged against her by private individuals, press freedom advocates maintain that these are actually attacks on press freedom under uh, a legal veil. Um, Ms. Ressa calls this the weaponization of the law. She's also calling it uh, death by a thousand cuts when um, you are they're tiring you uh, so that your focus on reporting, your focus on the job is taken away. And aside from the, the, the cases that Rappler face, uh, press freedom advocates say that there's been a pattern. Uh, ABS-CBN, the Philippines' largest broadcaster, it's free to air operation down Congress, which is comprised uh, of mainly of allies of Mr. Duterte, uh, did not grant the free to air license of ABS CBN. And when I given that uh, Ms. Reza has been quite a prominent critic of Rodrigo Duterte, uh, what does her win mean then uh, for journalism in the Philippines? It's been largely seen as an affirmation uh, of the work that not only Rappler uh, does, but also journalists, uh, even different journalists all over I the do, world. I do apologize. Even, we did, uh, the nomination that leaked uh, uh, also mentioned that uh, Ms. Ressa is a symbol for journalists all over the wor world, and especially in the context of the Philippines. In 2020, the Philippines uh, dropped out of the top five most deadliest countries in the world, and this was hailed by a government in state media, but actually it's still seventh most, most deadliest country for journalists, uh, seventh in the world. So while there have been improvements, uh, these improvements have been marginal, to say the least. The single deadliest attack on journalists uh, worldwide happened in 2009 in the Philippines. Uh, this happened during the massacre of journalists who were uh, with uh, a convoy to cover the filing of candidacy of a local governor when they were stopped by a rival clan. So um, this election-related violence comes to mind as the Philippines closed today the registration or the filing of certificates of candidacies for the 2022 elections. And uh, opposition figures in the Philippines who have been long factionalized are actually working, endeavoring towards what it calls an anti-administration vote in 2022. And one of the core issues there is press freedom. All right, many thanks for getting us up to speed. Brenna Bernal is speaking to us from Manila. And we do apologize for the brief loss of picture.